Dear learners, welcome you all to e-learning platform. Now we have reached week 4. In this week you will learn a new poem by William Barker Yeats. The poem is The Wild Sons at Cruz. Me, Faisal Ahmed, as usual, with you throughout the whole lecture. Faculty member, Department of English, World University of Bangladesh. Let's begin today's lesson. In this lesson, you will learn the poem's introduction, the wild songs at school, and then the text recitation, or recitation of the poem, and then summary and an analysis. Introduction about the poem, the wild songs at school. The Wild Sons at Cool is a poem by William Butterfield, published in a collection of the same name in 1917, written when Yes was in his 50s. The poem sees a speaker visiting Cool Park in Ireland, a place which Yes himself had visited. Here, he observes a large group of sons, comparing the present moment to his first visit to the park 19 years prior. Though the speaker admires the songs, the whole poem is suff suffused with an atmosphere of melancholy and regret, with the speaker projecting the kind of traits onto the songs that he feels he now lacks. There has been much spectacular speculation about the source of the speaker's feelings. The poem itself subtly alludes to lost love and many critics also point to the timing of the poem's composition, shortly before the end of the First World War. During the Irish struggle for independence from the British as being highly significant. Let's have a recitation of the poem, The Wild, Wild Sons at Coo. The trees are in their autumn beauty, the woodland paths are dry. Under the October twilight, the water mirrors a steel sky. Upon the brimming water among the stones are nine and fifty swans. The nineteenth autumn has come upon me since I first made my count. I saw before I had well finished all suddenly mount and scatter wheeling in great broken rings upon their clamorous wings. I have looked upon those brilliant creatures, and now my heart is sore. All changed since I, hearing at twilight, the first time on the shore. The bell beat of their wings above my head, trod with a lighter tread. Unwearied still, love by lover, the paddle in the cold, Companionable streams are climbed the air. Their hearts have not grown old, passion or conquest, wonder why the will attend upon them still. But now the drift on the still water, mysterious, beautiful, among what rushes will they build, by what lakes, Age or pool, delight man's eyes when I awake some day to find they have flown away. So that's the poem. The poem is uh, cons uh, the poem consists of five stanzas. Each stanza comprises of six lines. So five uh, five times six. 30 lines. Okay, the whole poem is of 30 lines. And 5 stanzas. Each stanza comprises of 6 lines. Okay, now we will go through the summary and analysis 
of the one the wild sons of Ku. The trees are filled with fall colors and the paths through the woods are dry. It's an October evening and the cool lake reflects the calm, motionless sky above. I can see 59 so ones, 9 and 50, that means 59, 1 less than 60. I can see 59 so ones swimming in the lake which is almost overflowing with water. It was 19 years ago that I was first here and counted the swans. Back then, before I could count them all, the birds suddenly flew up above me in huge broken circles, soaring around on their noisy wings. Looking at these beautiful birds now, I feel heartache. Everything has changed since I first stood on the shore of the lake at twilight and heard the swan's wings beating like bells above my head. Back then I used to walk with a lighter step. The swans are still just as full of life as they were back then. In their loving pairs, the paddle through the cold, friendly water soar into the sky. Their hearts remain young. Their lips are still filled with passionate desires, with the freedom to go wherever they want. At this, at this moment, at this moment, though the sons float on the calm surface of the lake. <coughs> they stand and beautiful in the future where will they build their nests where will other men have the pleasure of seeing the sons when I wake up one day to find that they have flown away from Queen the wild sons at Queen analyzes major themes time and aging so from childhood then adulthood and then old age and William Butler Yeats has reached his old age, I mean about his 50s to 60s, okay? So that's why there's the nostalgia. 19 years ago he saw the sons and again 19 years later he uh, sees them again and contemplate on his adulthood, young age, whenever he is old. The Wild Sons at Cool is a bleak, mournful poem in which the speaker returns to a lake in Ireland. The cool of the title that he first visited 19 years earlier. Here he observes a group of sons just as he had years before, but instead of bringing him joy, the sons' beauty and vitality now fill the speaker with a bittersweet feeling. This is because the unwearied swans seem to have stayed the same, still filled with passion, mystery, mystery, and brilliance. While the speaker's own life has been changed irreversibly by the onward passage of time. In other words, the swans remind the speaker that he himself has grown older and drifted farther from the vibrancy and possibility of his youth. With aging, the poem thus suggests comes a tangible sense of loss for all the life left behind. The poem is essentially a tale of two moments, the memory of the speaker's first visit to Kul and the present day in which he finds himself there again. Though it is not clear if has visited in between those two moments. Through comparing these moments, the poem is able to explore the way that the relentless passage of time has affected the speaker, diminishing his lust for life and making him weary. The poem begins by 
signaling that the speaker feels himself to be in the autumn of his life. The general setting establishes a sense of transition, one which echoes the way that the speaker feels that ultimately his hopes and dreams, later phrased as passion or conquest, have passed him by. Looking at the numerous ele elegant swans on the lake, the speaker starts to draw a distinction between the time when he first saw them, 19 autumns ago or 19 years ago, and the present moment, 19 years later. He clearly admires the swans, calling them brilliant, but all's changed since he first stood on the shore at Kool. The swans' brilliance is a kind of constant, true then and true now which contrasts with the way that the speaker feels himself to have changed over the years. Back then the speaker walked with a lighter tread. Now his age and his life experiences make him metaphorically heavier and slower. This, of course, juxtaposes or put the things together with the ever-present grace of the songs, which again appears the same now to the speaker as it was back then, 19 years ago. To that end, the song's way of being reminds the speaker of how he himself used to be. This is drawn out by the way the poem describes the differences between the songs and the speaker in the present day implying that he used to have more of the traits he continues to perceive in the birds. Whereas the swans are unwearied still and their hearts have not grown cold. The speaker can no longer say the same of himself. The poem implies that he has grown weary and his heart has grown cold. It's not specified what exactly has happened in the nearly two decades since the speaker first visited Kool. From the mansion of lovers and hearts, the reader can presume that, in part, the speaker mourns for lost love. But critics also speculate that, given the timing of the poem's writing, the loss that the speaker feels extends more widely the poem was written soon after the horrors of the First World War and during the continuing struggle for Irish independence from the British. That said, the, specif the specifics are not really the main point here. What's important is the way that the speaker senses these changes to be irreversible. Time can only travel in one direction, and the good times, like the speaker's first visit to Kool, are only memories. In other words, there's no going back. There's no going back. Time can only travel in one direction, and it can never go back. That's why all the things become memories. That's why the songs seem to evoke such bittersweet Feelings for the speaker, there is something timeless, magisterial even, about their way of being. They also seem free to wonder why they will and remind mysterious beautiful. They remind the speaker of what he has lost to time. The wild swans at cool then shows an individual struggling to come to terms with the path that life has taken. Ultimately, this speaks to the way that life runs an irreversible course that can't be reversible. People can't go back or change the way that things have turned out. The speaker holds on to happier memories, but these are tinged by the sadness that they are fated never to become real experiences again. So here, he, uh, here is a comparison between nature and humanity. Nature in the poem is presented as something that is unchanging in its beauty and majesty. This creates a sense of division between the world of nature 
and that of human beings which as represented by the speaker is acutely aware of the passage of time and plagued by a sense of loss nature also seems untroubled by perhaps even entirely indifferent to human foibles or weaknesses the soans continuing to appear full of passion and vigor even as the speaker is weighed down by the hopes dreams and disappointments that people experience in life in life these doubles down on the poem's gentle sense of isolation and sadness about aging heartbreak and perhaps even wider contextual issues like the first world war these issues the poem subtly suggests remain small or insignificant in the face of nature's everlasting grandeur throughout the poem the speaker projects human thoughts and feelings into the songs however this serves to highlight that this is a one way relationship the songs the nature more generally go on as they are without any need for the speakers of or observations these hints at the complexity of human life contrasted with what seems like the more instinctive existence of the songs nature is clearly not under the speaker's control when he first tried to count the songs a kind of application of human logic and he got to nature the sword into the sky before he had well finished the songs of course didn't for him to finish counting but just did whatever came instinctively to them nevertheless as the poem goes on the speaker projects his whole world of human feelings and emotions onto the soans he characterizes them as lovers with hearts that are set on passion or conquest as they please but the sense of distance between the speaker and the soans remains palpable that is to say the soans are just going about their lives in accordance with their nature they don't seem to doubt themselves or worry about their place in the world they just inhabit their environment there's thus something almost comical and tragic about the speaker's attempt to view nature through the prism of his own feelings <clears throat> that say it is also something that everybody does and so indicate something fundamental about the human condition the need for understanding sympathy and narrative within the broader world indeed the speaker wonders in the poem's closing lines if the songs might some day have flown away is perfectly possible of course that in accordance with the nature the songs might do this this heightens the sense of distance between the speaker and the songs thereby also intensifying the sense of fundamental difference between humanity and nature itself furthermore this makes the speaker's life seem small and insignificant that is the unchanging and majestic nature of the songs is a kind of stand in for the way in which is one life has had little effect on the world and while he might have wanted his life to make a difference in the past now he feels too weary to believe that to be possible anymore so there's the end of the lesson of this week Thank you very much for being with me from the very beginning to the end of the lesson. So we we'll learn new things in the next lesson next week. Thank you and bye bye.